Ryan the Group and Whiskey and Barbecue. This is Josh from Cast Strength. Howdy. And he's brought booze, I've brought meat, and we're gonna be doing a competition today about what's better, a sous vide New York strip that's seared or reverse seared. I'm going for reverse sear, but apparently he likes putting his meat in a hot tub, so. That's right. You gotta just make you gotta make it comfortable, like get it to loosen up a little bit, you know. <laughs> it's gonna be a good day. So, uh, what are we drinking? We have right now the Ben Milan small batch rye. Awesome. Uh, so I'm gonna pour a little bit of that while you're talking about. It. You got the primal cut here, right? Yes. So uh, it's a it's a great way to buy if you're gonna do a lot of steaks. It's a great way to do it. Yeah. So um, what's good about this kind of thing is, example, this is what's called a strip loin roast. It is all the New York strips still put together. You can go down, like the H-E-B went and bought this today. They were $12.99 a pound for Prime. I got this for $10.99 a pound. And I knew I needed like 10, 11, 12 steaks. $2 savings over 10 pounds. 20, right at 20 bucks. Can't argue with that, it's a solid deal. So with this, how thick do you want them? You know, for me, thicker the better. <laughs> you know, uh, I think I think inch and a half is, is that's a good size for a steak. You got to get ten out of this guy. Uh, yeah, we'll get plenty out of it. Yeah, I mean, they're, I think we've got enough. Guys. Yeah, we we do. And I got actually, we only need to get eight out of here because there's two more in the fridge that Evan <laughs> brought over. There's even more. Don't laugh. So, a good trick is if you get a primal, know how wide your knife is. Because what you do is you start your knife on an edge, roll your knife. And I'm gonna slide back a little bit because I can see the two indents that I made. I know that'll give me an inch and a half because I know my knife is an inch wide. That's a cool trick, yeah. So then, just cut it all the way down. Bam. <laughs> so kind of important too to have a serrated knife as well. That's the easiest thing to do yeah. for, for something like this. With something like this, a serrated knife is easier just because it's, we've let this get up to room temperature. So this isn't the easiest thing in the world to cut. This is my brisket knife. So I, this thing has cut a lot of meat. The, um, look at that, right. Also, because this is a competition, we don't want anybody judging us saying, oh, well, Josh had a better cut of meat than Ryan did. Like, no, y'all. This is coming off the same subprimal cut. Exactly. You it's, can't get any closer to a perfect experiment than this. Yeah. Um, knock some of this off real fast. Oh, there you go. Okay. Because that's not going to cook down very well at all. And the other advantage, I mean, whenever you get the subprimals like this, you can trim big pieces of fat off like that because it's easier than doing it on a full cut. So what's your criteria for when you go to trim some fat? Like what stays and what goes? Is it um, kind of the, the harder, yeah. like kind of flakier fat versus the stuff that's soft? Yeah, so like this, where you can pinch into it and it peaks up and breaks off. I know that's not gonna render down, but that's kind of on the outside. I'm not really worried about it. And with how we're cutting or how we're cooking everything, I'm not worried about that kind of stuff in just kind of in, in general sure um but yeah i'm i'm definitely taking i'm normally taking harder pieces of fat like that off anything that's kind of waxy like that yeah sure because those those normally don't render down but we're going to be putting these through some kind of intense heat so we'll probably need to a little bit oh good lord these are some pretty steaks. Yeah, you you did a nice job uh, picking this guy out. I, well, so this is the advantage of going to your butcher and saying, hey, I'm looking for X. I went to my butchers at H-E-B, they know me, walked in and said, hey, I'm looking for a loin strip or a loin roast and a subprimal told them what I was doing. Got like, okay, and came back and rang this up for me. So that's an important, so you, you had to have them bring this out of the back, right? Yes, like you, this is you, not something that's in the chest. Right, right. You might find it at Costco, maybe out in the chest. But maybe, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But if you're going to your normal uh, grocery store, you have to go and ask for this. Yeah, and and that's, I've said it before, the same way I get my, my beef ribs and I get everything else. I, I take the time to get to know my butchers. I know, I, and I've also researched, I know how the primal cuts work. I know this stuff primal cuts work and I know what H-E-B gets in, so they'll, sure. they get beef short ribs, and we, we talked about this before, where they'll get two four bone sets in a giant cryovac thing. Right. If you just get that from them, not trimmed down, 
you're paying significantly less than if you go to the chest when they happen to have them out. Yeah, that's what I've always heard is like the more work that went into preparing the pack. So if you get one single cut of this, somebody yeah. had to trim it, somebody had to cut it, somebody had to package it individually. And uh, they're also not going to trim it to the thickness that you want. Right, exactly. <laughs> so not only do you have more control, you're getting better value because like less work went into packaging it. Absolutely. Yeah. So, all right. What we're going to do is we're going to kind of break these up. Josh is going to cook five. I'm going to cook five. I know there's only eight on the board. Remember, there's two more in the fridge. So whatever you'll see is back. Josh will be prepping everything because he's got to put his stuff in the hot, in the hot tub thing in my rig. <laughs> and then I'll season mine up and everything else. So see you whenever we get back. So we're gonna season them up, put them in these bags, vacuum seal the bags, and then I'm gonna put them in the in the hot tub, as you call it. Okay. Yeah, give so, them a nice bath. So is it just salt that goes in there, or are you gonna put anything else in there this time? I, I just do salt uh, on the first pass, and I'd go a little bit lighter than I would do, you know, if I was to just slap these on a grill immediately. Okay. I go a little bit less salt than I would normally use, because I'm gonna, once I take them out, I'm gonna salt them again uh, before they actually go on the grill. All right. So I don't want to oversalt them. What's crazy is the amount of salt you're putting on there now is almost the exact same amount of salt where if you were going to just sprinkle it and then do a salt cure quick dry age in your refrigerator. Yeah. A real nice light layer. Uh, another way, so there's really, there's a bunch of different ways of tenderizing a steak. So sous vide's really good at tenderizing. Reverse you'll do the same thing. You can also uh, put a layer of salt in here like Josh is doing, just a light sprinkle where you can kind of see it but not super crazy and just put that in your fridge and let it sit for 8, 10, 12, 24 hours. And what the salt does is it pulls moisture out of it, reduces the moisture content, it concentrates those beef flavors. It's, it's kind of like a quick age, but not really. Yeah, kind of, you know, these are some thick steaks, so they can tolerate. You said you wanted a thick steak. They can tolerate a, they can tolerate a lot of seasoning. I you know? gave you a thick steak. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm excited. This is going to be good eating. I think, I think this one right here, this this got my name on it right here. Which one, that one? Yeah. Of course it does. I think so. That one looks gorgeous. We still haven't figured out how we're going to judge this yet, other than just, like, pros and cons. So here's the thing with competitions like this. Everybody wins. Yeah, everybody's going to win. You know, that's uh, it's not really an issue. You know, we can <laughs> we can talk smack all we want, but at the end of the day, there's a lot of steak here, and everybody's going to be happy. So, uh, yeah, I think yours really is gonna it's gonna get that more uh, smoky flavor profile on it. Mine's gonna have less smoke, but it's gonna be done um, that sort of perfectly edge to edge uh, thing that you get from sous vide. Um, so. Hold my booze and watch this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How are you liking that rye, by the way? I, I'm liking it a lot. Uh, ben Malum rye. The distillery tasting room is in Texas. There, it's questionable things. They are making their own stuff. There is cool stuff coming out from them in the very near future. So keep an eye on that. Yeah, they've uh, they've brought some cool people on staff, from what I hear. Yep. Uh, should be. It's gonna be a good time. Should be some awesome stuff coming from them in the next few years, I think. Um, yeah, they're out there near Andalusia. Uh, yeah. Uh, just just down the road and by uh, Real Ale and uh, kind of near Garrison Brothers. Ooh. Sort of. Yeah. It's, it's close, yeah. They're, they're close in Texas terms. Yeah, right? exactly, exactly. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. It's only like a 40 minute drive, that's close. Right. <laughs> and I, I drive past Andalusia and Ben Millum, Milam, and a couple of other places every day coming back and forth from work. Sure. Yeah. So it's really hard not to stop on the regular. Yeah. Have you been to Andalusia yet? I have not. You need to go. Those guys are great. I know. Those guys Gretchen's over there like, oh. Yeah. Making a shock Rex face. So they make they make these whiskey filled chocolates that uses their uh, <laughs> You're a, you're an Irish whiskey guy, I know I that. Am. Uh, so they make a triple distilled sort of in an Irish style okay. uh, whiskey and that's what they put inside these chocolates. It's amazing. Delicious. Sounds stuff. like it. Alright, so I've got them all in the bags. We're gonna vacuum seal them here real quick. I'm gonna wash my hands. Briefly. So one thing I can tell you is with we'll the water going, I'm loud, you'll hear it. Uh, with Josh on cast strength, one thing I can tell you is like, seeing him on cast strength and then hanging out with him, 
It's the same dude. It really is the same dude. You, you'll see a lot of people on YouTube, Facebook, things like that. We have to keep up there because, you know, puppies. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you'll see some people that are kind of different when you meet them in person. Him? Nah. What you see is what you get, man. And you also got to experience chaos. <laughs> I did. I did. He is sadly uh, out of commission today. <laughs> He's not, not here. But next time, you're missing all of this beef. All right. I will probably swing by just to grab a stick and walk back out. So, vacuum seal. The pause for the noise. You, uh, you have that food saver over there. It's probably way faster than this thing is. Yeah. Yeah, we're switching. That's forever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's get the big dog. Still? Yeah, it's... I mean, look at it. <laughs> it's it's adorable. It's wee like video. It's like wee, yeah. It's, it's like a veto-sized... Vacuum sealer. Is that make fun of Vito? Well, yeah, it's kind of a thing we do, but you know, we love Vito. We love Vito. We'll see if you like this one better. <clears throat> yeah, I'm betting this one. So, what's cool about this one, pop it down, holds a roll in it, it's got a cutter, everything else. So, so fancy. Um, normal, dry, so it'll be good there. Do you need it at an angle? Uh, no, not really, just so as long as it's not pinched. Okay. second whenever we come back we're gonna have the sous and everything back here we'll be up to temperature and you'll see how we kind of do set up with everything else in there right yes all right so sous vide is up to almost 120 so we're gonna call it close enough sous vide's almost uh, to 117 right now we're gonna call it close enough I have it set at 120 okay uh, you know I like to leave it in there for a couple hours technically you can do steaks like this at like 125 or so and leave it for about an hour and they're ready to grill but I like to spend a little extra time in the hot tub okay uh, you know just just getting nice and relaxed I'm just dude you know, I'm as intrigued as anybody else is about this. I took the pork butt against Instapot because I want to see how the Instapot works. true, you did, you yes. did. And I, I did it because I wanted to see an Instapot. And I'm probably going to end up getting one, to be completely honest. Yeah. yeah, I think it's something where, you know, you can just cook, cook a bulk uh, batch or something like this right now with... Uh, you're basically guaranteed, once it comes out of this passive cook in here, you're guaranteed that within five minutes of being on the grill, you're gonna have absolutely every one of these is done perfectly. Okay, so as I'm watching you shove those things in there, do these come like larger tubs? <laughs> you can, you, you, yeah, you can. I mean, you know, so Gretchen and I, it's just the two of us at the house, so like this was an appropriate size, but you can definitely get a larger container. Yeah, because your containers are in the room pretty quick. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, a lot of times I'm, I'm just cooking like three, four chicken breasts in here or something yeah. like that, so this is, this is loading it up pretty good, but I think we'll be okay. Oh yeah. yeah. I mean, the temperature's not dropping or anything. No. Nah. Yeah. It's 118 degrees. 118. And I just kind of want to make sure that everybody is not too crowded as much as I can. I'll probably move them around a little bit since okay. it is fairly, fairly style moving around from time to time, but. It's supposed to be warm. It's supposed to be warm. It's supposed to be 120 degrees. Yep. Wow. Hi, world. Meet Maddie. Hi. Hi. 117.6. Bye, Maddie. Bye. You'll notice also. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Yeah, uh, let me know when it's time to eat. 
Uh, you'll notice also, you were talking about it, it was loud earlier, but like as you get the water level up, yeah, it starts to be pretty pretty quiet. So, you know, we'll have this thing on and, and be watching TV and stuff and leave it on for a few hours and, you know, it does, doesn't really bother us. Um, so, yeah, we'll leave it here for a while. I'm going to check on it every so often, maybe kind of move them around since it is a little tight in there, but I think so it'll be good to go. We were texting back and forth and I said something. They're like, okay, so each of us are cooking 10 or like, <laughs> no, no, 10 total, five each. You're like, oh, okay. I'm like, what, sous vide team panic attack? I mean, I, I'd be, I mean, if we're going to each do 10 steaks, I'm okay with that, but we may need a little more time. <laughs> Certainly a bigger tub. The other thing actually that I really recommend if you're going to do a sous vide, um, for whatever size tub you get, I think this is a handy add-on right here. Yeah. Uh, not only does it keep the uh, the heat inside, so this thing doesn't have to work quite as hard, uh, it also discourages evaporation. Yeah, and because right? I, I have been looking at sous vide's because I do like them for certain applications, and cooking steaks is one of those, especially like large cuts of meat that I want to bring up a temperature at a time. Yeah. And everybody says, spend the money, get the topper so you don't lose your water, and it, it helps bring up the temperature quicker and it stabilizes better. So exactly. Got it. All right, so whenever we come back, these will still continue to be in a hot tub, and I'll start seasoning up my steaks, getting them ready to go into reverse here. The hot tub has been going for an hour and a half. We got started a little bit late. It's about 5.30, dinner's probably close to about 7. I've got a half a chimney of lump charcoal going outside. We're gonna throw some pecan onto it. Josh has been drinking whiskey and both of our glasses are empty, ironically enough. Oh. And Gretchen experienced some hot oh, sauce. God, Jesus. So if you not just any. Not just any hot sauce, but the one that me and Chaos and Josh enjoyed on, we'll see that episode. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're going to do a slightly, are we doing croak again? No. Oh, no, no, no. What we got? No, it's uh, the Balcones Texas Weeded Bourbon. Oh, nice. Yeah. The glass is right there. <laughs> if you don't mind. Of course. Um, it's great having Josh come over because he brings really cool bourbons and whiskeys and everything else. It's kind of a thing. It is. <laughs> I cook, you bring booze. It works. You know. Um, so for this, we're using our slightly modified normal rub. We're doing two tablespoons of coarse ground pepper, one tablespoon of coarse kosher salt, half tablespoon of minced garlic or granulated garlic, and a half tablespoon of smoked paprika. Normal stuff, toss it together. Is this your normal, like when you do steaks, this is your go-to rub? Yeah, pretty much. So with like Josh's, what he's doing is because he's doing the sous vide, he just put the salt on it, he wants to pull some moisture out of it, bringing everything up to temperature, breaking the connective tissue down. Mine's a little bit different because we're salting, because, excuse me, because we're smoking this, I want to build a little bit of bark. So I'm going to use my granulated stuff. I'm going to start getting some flavor built into that. <laughs> oh, 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 mine. <laughs> look at that. Hi. <laughs> you can only see the look on my wife's face. So it, I'm, I'm building a bark. I want that to start getting that crusty outside, getting all that built up nicely. All right, you gonna let that sit on there for a little bit or is it gonna just kind of sit on the grill and it's soak in that way? Yeah, it's gonna sit on the grill because what's gonna happen is as it comes up to temperature, or as the meat slowly starts to warm, it's gonna open up the pores of the meat itself. The juice is gonna help dissolve it. It's gonna pull it in. All the texture, all the muscle fibers are gonna open up. It's gonna be really good. And I'm, I'm a little heavy handed on seasonings, but it's, just a habit I've gotten into because I smoke and I grill so much that a lot of seasonings fall off. Sure. And that's where a lot of people say, oh, well, grilled meat, you don't really taste the seasoning. I'm like, well, that's because you didn't put enough on. You've been seasoning the fat side. Yeah, absolutely. It's an inch and a half. Yeah, that might be two inches right there. No, same with the big boy you liked. Um, you watch me measure all of them. <laughs> that's true, yeah. Uh, yeah, you, you can tolerate a lot of seasoning now, down. right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Get on in there! My wife is just shaking her head at us. <laughs> Which is a normal occurrence in my life. So, again, reverse sear. We'll link to the video above so you can kind of see how, that, how the grill and everything got set up for that and how the portion goes. Because really from this point, once you get the seasonings on, we throw the meat on, it's gonna run 160, 180. We're gonna cook them to about 115 degrees internal. We'll pull them off. Probably, well, the next time you're gonna see us is whenever Josh is pulling his stuff out of the hot tub and getting them seasoned up and me getting ready to 
throw mine on to sear. Are you doing uh, like a temperature probe in there to monitor the temp? Are you just checking it every so often? I check it every so often. Gotcha. I know about how long it takes. And it sure. just, it's one of those things that like, I, I wholeheartedly believe that everybody should start off with the temperature probe in the meat whenever they're doing stuff. But it's one of those things that I've done this enough times that I know about how long it's gonna yeah, take. Yeah, you just kind of have a feel for it now. Yeah, we, we pulled, I would say I pulled these things, I brought the room temperature, but I didn't. So they've been in the fridge. This is gonna take right at 45 minutes to an hour to get to the temperature that I want it. Pull it off, let it sit for about 10 or 15 minutes, and then we're just gonna sear everything. Nice. The sous vide, done, ready Hot to go. Hot tub time machine's good to go. Hot tub time <laughs> machine. <laughs> uh, okay, let's get this guy out of here. There's such a smoky smell in here too. Yeah, yeah. No, it, it is not coming from here. Not coming from these super gray looking <laughs> steaks right now. <laughs> Uh, That's awesome. Uh huh. Uh huh. Boiled meat. So these are ready to serve. No. <laughs> um, <clears throat> have you had the bubbler yet? Yeah. It's oh, really good. Whoa. It's super floral. Yeah. Really good. But not like the bad too. kind of florals. Actually, no, no, no. It's, it's not like a potpourri or anything. Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna take these guys out and dry them off thoroughly so that they can go onto a super hot grill. And so outside we have about, I've got one chimney worth on top of the coals that I was using for my reverse sear, and I've got another chimney that's firing up. So we're gonna have about two chimneys worth of lump charcoal going in the grill whenever we put these out. Uh, my steaks hit about 110, 112 degrees. Looking nice and smoky, man. Yeah. Mine got to about 112 degrees, so. You were talking about that bend, though, earlier. Yeah, you I mean, bend. Well, it, it's, like a, it's like a wee steak. <laughs> it's a, yeah, it's a wee <laughs> steak. Yeah. This, this monster right here. Yeah, yeah, so what I really like, and how you know whenever this technique is working really well, how you can see the muscle fibers start to kind of pull apart, you know you've done a really good job on breaking down the connective tissue and getting those steaks nice and tender. That, that's the kind of sign you're looking for. Absolutely. Ignore the brown. We're going to fix the brown with a really hard sear. I'm also going to show Josh my butter and garlic trick. Y'all have seen it before. He hadn't. I've heard, I've heard about watch it. Watch my channel. So. What? <laughs> but too yeah. busy putting out lots of videos on my own channel. Not. <laughs> I'm not even going to talk trash. Do you want to try uh, Yeah, that would yeah. probably be a good idea. Yeah, great. Yeah. Because, you know, dogs and plastic and brown juices. Oh, well, I don't know if you just call, heard that, but Ryan just called it his channel. Stop. You don't oh, say that. Yeah. I've, heard, I've heard it's the Ryan show. It's not yeah, the Ryan, Ryan show. show. Did I say it? Okay. Yeah. yeah. I think it's just a subconscious thing, you know? I think I say it because I'm the only one standing here that's on our channel. Because <laughs> he's referred to standing here. He's, hi, dogs. Hey, pups. He's referred to his, their channel as his channel. Our is that, channel. Is that true, Josh? I mean, really, more than anything right now, it's the Vito show. This is very true. It's Congratulations all the way to Castring for 500 subscribers. Woo! Just make 500 nice. subscribers. Yeah. Just today, just this evening. So, pretty exciting. Yeah. That's fun. Yeah, yeah. We're digging it. All right, so yeah, we want to get these as dry as possible because they're not really going to start to brown well until all the moisture on the surface evaporates. And, you know, the quicker we can get to that point where they start getting that nice sear on the outside, the better we're going to be, right? The more delicious these steaks are going to be. Brown food is good food. That's right. So you're doing, are, what are you putting on the outside of that? Just salt and pepper. Okay. Salt and pepper. There we go. You want the grinders or you want the little containers where you can just sprinkle it on? Uh, uh, I'm good with the grinders, okay. I think. Um, or actually, you have this. Give me the salt. I like to grind the pepper in there. Okay. Kind of coarse. Please. <laughs> Please. <laughs> so your steaks are all seasoned up. Yep. Next thing we're gonna do. Huh? Stick of butter, tin foil, about a tablespoon and a half of garlic, salt, pepper. This is for your rib, Brian. Nope. This is for what I do on my rib, on my, on my ribs, on my steaks, to my sear. I'm just going to do this. We're going to put it on the grill. The grill is coming up to temperature rapidly. There's a small inferno going in there. So next time you'll see us, we're going to have a couple cameras outside, maybe one, probably one, and just get done with that. So playing with fire, playing with big fire.
all the heat and everything going on, everything's up to temperature. We've got our butter melted, got our steaks ready to go. So what we do is with our melted butter mixture, just take the steak and just roll it in it and get ready. How long are you steering for on each side? Oh, 45 seconds to a minute. Or until the arm hair is no longer there. <laughs> until you've lost your eyebrows. I'm less, yeah, I'm more worried about the eyebrows than the arm hair. On that. All of it. <laughs> it is all the degrees. <laughs> well, considering that the steak comes out. Yeah, that like, that sizzling <laughs> on the surface of the steak, that's when you know it's going to be good. And no lie, to cook a steak like this takes a certain amount of brazenness. Yeah. <laughs> Bravery. Why would you put the big piece next to the small piece? <laughs> <laughs> the small piece is going to have a right, complex. Josh, yeah. I'm done. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, <laughs> so as hot as we're going to get it there? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. How much hotter do you want it? <laughs> yeah, you know, kind of as hot as it can go. Uh, all right. So I do my butter trick. I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. You don't want to eat fire as you're doing nah, it? I'm all right. <laughs> kind of running out of severe, like, super hot room. You got over here, you're super hot. You're not, like, right over the coal hot. Yeah. This is where I want to be. That little one's not going to take much. No. And that's the other thing, like, I know normally you like to close the lid, and if you want to, you can. Yeah. But normally, I just leave it open to let all of it just go. Sure. No, it's definitely, like, slightly different from from uh, my setup, but you know, it should be basically the same result. That's kind of what I mean. Like, I'm so used to gauging, like, mm -hmm. how long that takes on my setup, right? Or is this going to behave a little differently? In fact, I might, I might wait for your suggestion on when, when to flip. My suggestion? Yeah. Let's take a look at them. But I mean, yours were at 120 degrees before they went on, so they're gonna, you're just building bark. They're building crust. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, yours are probably pretty close to there from the, well, you rest them for a little bit. Yeah, well, mine, I pulled mine off the smoker about 112. Yeah. 110, 112. Let's go ahead and flip them anyway. Yeah, and always flip them again. Burn yourself? No. You still have to that rope. We're good. It seems like right in the center there is kind of the sweet spot. Yep. That's where everything's piled up. Yeah. Power. <laughs> So Ryan, we were talking earlier about how you and Josh met. <laughs> I think it was, I believe it was a, my threat over brisket. Um, so threats. Somebody mentioned something about brisket, and I it was on Facebook, and I messaged Josh, I messaged the thread Josh back, and said, Hey man, if you want, I can teach you how to cook a brisket. It's kind of my thing. And his wife responded, Gretchen, who's stayed off camera today. I like how the flame comes out. You know, you got really hot. 
Yeah. Um, his wife responds back with, I'll buy you whatever kind of whiskey you want if you come and teach him how to cook a brisket. So we've hung out a couple times to make sure that he can tolerate being around me for 18 hours before we committed make to that. Make sure nobody's a psycho killer or anything right, like that. Yeah, you know, you I mean, gotta that's... do that. <laughs> I'm gonna open that because that's gonna be gloomy. There you go. <laughs> I already want a stick tonight. Ow. Don't worry. I'm gonna cook yours over there on the gas fire pit. I'm talking trash. I bet you it's really what she's best at. <laughs> eating? Trash, trash talking? Oh. Yeah. And, and eating, and eating. Uh, okay. Yeah, you're pretty solid there. Yeah, that seems good. Yeah. Get that one out of the way. Oh, yeah. Eh? Okay, and then this guy. And then do that. It, yeah, no, it's just not gonna happen. <laughs> nope. Yeah. So yeah it's, you... It is. It's weird how like it's, it is a different cooking yeah. experience. Like I, I'm used to doing it on a green egg. Uh, so I'd like my whole just intuition is built around cooking with those tools, right? Yeah. So this is a different kind of experience, even though we're doing essentially the same process. Well, and what eggs are really great about is they maintain so much temperature on the inside. You can build up so much of that temperature. So what you can do is you can open the lid, you can throw it on, you can close it, and you have so much more radiant heat yep. where it keeps that up. Yep. Kettles don't work that way. Right. Kettles, if you want 700 degrees, you've got 700 degrees of straight cold. Just fire, yeah. 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 And, and to me, you get such a better sear because what I can get on five, six, seven hundred degrees on a kettle, you've got to get in like the nine hundred range on a Kamado. Because I mean, yeah, that's a nice hard sear on mm -hmm. it. You, uh, you really got to get. We're gonna it have high. to repeat this challenge <laughs> on the because uh, I don't know. I've gotten some serious, serious crust. You do have to get it up. I usually go to about six. Yeah, maybe 650, something like that, if I can. You know, um, what I did. Yeah, I know, you did the butter. <laughs> <laughs> I basically fried the, using the butter and the garlic, I basically fried Fry the it. outside of the steak. Do you uh, do you ever put butter on after the fact at nope. all? I know that's like a common steakhouse thing, right? Yeah, and that's a common steakhouse thing, and that that's covering up where if you like have a steak that has a flavor, you might want to turn that over. Yeah. Um, a flake that has a bunch of steak flavor, or if you're afraid that you overcooked it, yeah. And it's dried out, not that one. So you over, worry about overcooking the steak and dry it out a little bit. It needs to kind of render back down into it to get some of the more of that moisture in. Me? Sure. I ain't worried about that. Yeah, you're all right. Yeah. So Ryan, I know that you've made some of the the kettles and you're and you're making some of these the tables that that are surrounding it. Do you have a website where you're selling this stuff at? We can um, advertise for you. Not yet because we don't have a sales tax ID yet okay. or a sales tax yet. But yes, on our website on whiskeyandbarbecue.com, we're uh, at one at some point are going to have a build page where we'll start talking about the. The, the drum smokers that I build and yeah, the right. tables that I build and things like that. Cool. But until I get a tax ID and I'm legal, we're not really doing that yet. Legally. Right. Because this is what happens when you have a lawyer who's a part of your YouTube channel. <laughs> you have to like, be very hey, legal with a lot of things. You might not want to do that. Yeah. Alright. I'm going to call that good. Okay. Now yeah, it's time good. to eat. So go and cut yours up and make it count. All right. So, the moment of truth. Sous vide versus seared. Sous vide. I'm gonna cut right, right into the center here. Knock yourself out. Again, sharp knife. Yep. So. Very nice. Got a perfect edge to edge, just nice and crusty around the edges. Perfectly medium rare all the way through. And you'll see uh, an interesting thing that happens with sous vide is this looks not quite as red right now, but in about 60 seconds or so, it'll kind of bloom and get more red. Okay. Um, so go ahead and cut up a couple small slices and we'll give the wives that are hanging around and legal a taste and we'll see which one they like better. I think legal is on your team, so. Yeah, we gotta see. Yeah, <clears throat> no. <laughs> <laughs> legal for whatever meat tastes best. There, that's what I'm talking about. That's what's important. Alright. How many people right. we got? Uh, four or five. So that's for yours. You get one for so mine. As far as seasoning, it's all the same? Yep. So the only oh no, you had your spice rub. Oh well, yeah, I have my normal rub. Yeah. Not much difference. There we go. So, 
That's Josh's. Pass around dig in. Put this back over here. All right, so mine. Now we fed a couple kids earlier. Mine came off the grill about, I don't know, 10 minutes ago. So we'll see how mine looks on the inside. Mm. Very nice. Actually kind of the same edge to edge. Yeah. yeah. Very, very similar. Which we would have compared them. Very, you very similar. Right. Which is which? What's left, left, right? So this is the sous vide. This is the reverse here. Save a couple pieces of the sous vide for me and Josh to try. There's like four There's more. Like, <laughs> like five Calm down. Okay. I just saw the entire pan. Oh, there it is. Could we walk around? All right. <clears throat> and here's mine. So, Josh, you have one of those. All right. I'll have one of mine. You do yours and mine. And legal. You guys gonna toast pieces of steak? All right. So, which one was mine? Uh, <laughs> this is yours. It's the smoky one. Yeah, okay. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> kind of like I thought it started, man, tons of smoke on it. Mm -hmm. We get more time on the grill, even with pecan wood. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you get a huge, uh, huge hit of smoke on there. But perfectly done. Very good. Delicious. It, that's, I like it when I come out that way, so I'm happy with that. So? Cheers again. Sous vide. Brian's blushing. Thoughts? Well, they're both they're both extremely good, and it, believe it or not, the flavor profile is like extremely different. Because one of them has the smoke and the beef, and has like the the Texas kind of smoke barbecue that you would expect. But Josh is with the sous vide without the smoke and just the hard sear, you get like a super kind of beef flavor to it. Yeah, yeah. So, that uh, that kind of minerally beef flavor comes through. Yeah. There, versus the other one just had a, a nice smoke to it. So. Yeah. I think the I think the point is here is that everybody wins. Right? Definitely. <laughs> and it's like the conversation we've been having all day today. Yeah. If you like smoke, you're gonna like your reverse sear, just like you would like smoke your peaty whiskeys. Yeah. If you don't like smoking peaty whiskeys. You're never gonna like them, but like the sous vide, you get that super beef flavor, nice and minerally. You got a good salt flavor. Yeah, very exactly. Nice. I think that's part of it too. It like as it sits in the sous vide for a little while, the seasoning kind of soaks in and kind of permeates through the whole steak. Yeah, which is really nice. So, all right, well done. Yeah. All right, until nice. next time. Learn, learn. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers.